you will die. Your friends will die. Your loved ones will all die. There is no winning in a month. <laughs> Believe me, stay tuned. As we're told by the official developer's website, Among Us is a game where you're an astronaut crew member that must, quote, attempt to hold your spaceship uh, together and what? return back to civilization, with the stipulation that one crew crewmate has been replaced by a parasitic shapeshifter. So apologies to all the posters over in the Game Theorist subreddit proposing ideas like what if there was no imposter but instead was a paranoid crew member going on a killing spree. While I like that headcanon I underscore exist underscore yay! A lot of upvotes does not necessarily a confirmed theory make. The official website saying that one of the people on board is a parasitic shapeshifter is kinda hard to argue your way out of. Also, if the word of the devs isn't enough to go on well, I'm not sure what other explanation we have for the fact that one of the kill animations involves the imposter's chest opening up to reveal an alien mouth with a spiked tongue that impales its victims. No amount of psychopathy is making that one happen. Also, also, the parasitic alien explanation takes care of why the imposters are able to fit into the vents while the normal crewmates aren't. And, uh, speaking of vents... <sighs> Feel that cool clear cut of a conclusion as you might think. You see, we can presume that their biology is somewhat similar to ours, given that they require oxygen to breathe, they have heart rates that we see on the monitors, they have blood types just like we do, and maybe most significantly, they have vending machines full of soft drinks like Mountain Dew and electronics made by Samsung. <laughs> Sorry, copyright neutral drinks like Don Dew and electronics made by Simsong. Oh, and uh, that vending machine also includes an Easter egg reference to the developer's other game, Henry Stickman, the energy drink. You caught that one, right? Took me an embarrassingly long time to figure out that both games were made by the same team. Hey, imposter, see something, say something. That's so interesting. I wonder, how weird is that? There's gotta be something going on. Anyway, the reason we need to address the questionable humanity of the crew is the fact that apparently they're 3 foot 6 inches, or 1.06 meters tall, and they weigh only 92 pounds, or 41.7 kilograms each, based on the info that we're getting from the medbay scanners. I mean, that is awfully short and awfully light for a typical human being. What this tells me is that Among Us is taking place far into the future, where astronauts have been specifically bred for deep space travel, or are just being selectively weeded out by size. You see, the average male height of a human being is 5 foot 6 inches tall, 1.67 meters. The average female is 5'2", or 1.57 meters. Our crewmates in Among Us are only 70% that size, and yet seem to both function as humans and be surrounded by human products. So why would our crewmates be so short? Well, the fact is, quite simply, that certain body types just work better for certain careers. Consider horse racing jockeys. A racing jockey can technically be anyone, but the most successful ones are going to weigh in at about 100 pounds or 45.3 kilograms, and also have most of that weight concentrated in strong upper bodies. For astronauts traveling on long interstellar voyages to foreign planets, it's very likely that sometime in the far, far future, we're gonna have decided that smaller from 1956, or it came from outer space in 1953, or the thing from another world in 1951. Geez, there seem to be a lot of movies from the 50s about how your neighbors are actually aliens out to get you. Couldn't have anything to do with all that Cold War paranoia, could it? Nah. But out of all the sci-fi classics, there's one that this game seems to pay direct homage to. The 1980s science fiction movie, The Thing. It's actually one of my all-time favorite horror movies, which makes it a perfect time to talk about now that it's October. I'll give you a quick summary since the movie is older than most people watching this video. Let's Wait, be honest, what? it's older than most of the people working on this video. The Thing is set in Antarctica, where a group of American scientists are interrupted at their base by a helicopter shooting at a sled dog. The team rescues the dog, only to learn that the man piloting the helicopter was the sole surviving member of a Norwegian space team. They uncovered an alien spacecraft buried deep in the ice for over a thousand centuries. I'd say the ice it's buried in is a hundred thousand years old, at least. When the spacecraft thawed, it unleashed a deadly alien parasite that was capable of consuming any biological entity and copying its DNA to become a perfect replica. Sounding familiar, friends? The Norwegian crew is wiped out, leaving only one survivor, the helicopter pilot. Now a crazed madman desperately trying to kill the dog, believing it to be the alien. And he's not wrong. The dog is the alien. Oh, who's a cute little guy? Who's my cute little killer alien? You are. Yes, you are.
Good boy. Good boy. Go fetch. What ensues is, well, basically the plot of Among Us. The people on the science station have various tasks that they have to perform, requiring them to split up, which has the paranoia ratcheting up as they all begin to suspect each other in the quest to try and ferret out the alien imposters, sometimes even killing innocents. I mean, even the debates that they have in this movie sound a lot like the team meetings that are held in Among Us. Pretty? He's one of them. When do you think it got to him? Even anytime, uh, anywhere. Hey, look, Childs, come on. When the lights went out. That would have been a perfect time. Right. You said guys were missing, and Winters, where were you? The players are just each other. Yep, just about as calm and collected as a discussion in Among Us 2. So it's Among Us with the added wrinkle that the killer can now pose as the victim he just killed, which is actually a really cool wrinkle that they should try adding into the game. Oh, yeah, and if the parallels between this specific movie and the game weren't clear enough to you, the alien's favorite form of attack is its long, sharp, Sharp, piercing tongue that it uses to both grab and puncture its victims one by one. Pretty reminiscent of that one kill animation from the game, isn't it? Also, the alien in the movie isn't just something that you can kill by stabbing or shooting it. It has to be burned to a crisp or destroyed in an explosion to actually get rid of the thing. Which again is why we see the game requiring more permanent solutions like the airlock or lava pit. In the movie, the remaining human characters eventually decide to do the heroic thing. They accept that they're all going to die in the Antarctic science station, so the mission shifts from escape to destroy the alien imposter at all costs so it can infect anybody else. But that's not the case in the game. Unlike in the movie, in the game, we know that the alien wins and the worst comes to pass. Look at this. Reading the store page description for the game's DLC maps, Mira HQ and Polis, we learn the following. Mira HQ, quote, After a long journey on the Skeld, crewmates should spend some time back at the Mira headquarters. Surely there aren't as many imposters there. So obviously, Obviously, the long journey on the Skeld is referring to the events that took place in the game's first map, which presumably is when the crew first encounters the alien. After surviving an encounter with the alien parasite, the crew seems relieved to return to home sweet headquarters, thinking that they're safe, but it seems the alien menace has traveled with them back to the HQ. And things don't get any better with the third map of Polis. Again, from the description of the Polis DLC store page, quote, Man the expedition to the research base on Polis, a planet far away from any would-be imposter. And, uh, by the way, Paulus is a direct connection back to the Henry Stickman lore. In episode 4 of Henry Stickman, Fleeing the Complex, one of the guards is named Paulus Petrovich. Same name, but how do I know they're connected? Grab a hold of his bio, and you get this. Quote, Paulus Petrovich, he won a sweepstakes and got to name a planet after himself. So, pretty solid confirmation that these two universes are connected. So, according to this game's lore, Paulus should be a safe space. But of course, once you load up the map, people are bound to start dying as the alien parasite is once again running amok. The conclusion here is obvious. If this was indeed a safe place before the crew arrived, then obviously the alien parasite traveled with them. We are bringing the alien parasite wherever we go. We are spreading it. Canonically speaking, we failed in killing the imposters on the Skeld, which allowed them to infect the headquarters. In fact, by this point, the crew members seem to have accepted frequent murder by alien imposter as a basic fact of life. It's gotten to the point where they're making snowman recreations of murder scenes. Jeez, these astronauts must have themselves a really grim sense of humor, and apparently no sense of urgency when it comes to doing their tasks if this is what they're doing in their free time. Because they know it's impossible. They've lost. And so will you. <sighs> You don't need to be a 200 IQ crew member to see where this story is going. It's the tale of a bunch of astronauts who, through their actions, are allowing the alien parasite to spread. A fate that was narrowly avoided by the crew and the thing. Every step they take that brings them closer to home is one step closer to the demise of their home planet, with every person on it eventually becoming infected. Oh, wait, uh, gotta deal with this.